In the new self, it's not like we never get angry, right? But we have the priorities in place where we get angry about the right things. So let's talk about some acceptable anger. What would that be? Well, first thing, it's not quick to get angry. So it's not like someone says something to you and you're just like, <laughs> It's not like that. You're, you know, it might take a while before your anger actually expresses itself. Um, it's going to be in response to serious injustice, like abuse or neglect or, you know, slavery or these horrible things that people actually should get upset about. It'll be in response to things like unbelief. If you know someone who's just constantly saying no to God, and they're hurting themselves and they're hurting other people, you know, that'll make you angry because you know that they're doing the wrong thing. They're making the wrong choice. False teaching. If someone claims to represent Jesus, but the things that they're saying are so far off from anything God says, that's really infuriating. And it's okay to get angry about that. But the thing is, acceptable anger is never going to be from a personal offense. It's not about defending myself. It's more about, you know, defending other people and protecting other people. Also, when you choose to express anger in the right way, it's going to be planned out and with self-control. So sometimes I know I'm going to be hanging out with this friend and they've been saying no to God in a lot of ways. They've been hurting themselves and other people. And so I'm like, okay, when I sit down with my friend, I know I'm going to have to like bring the heat up a little bit because I want them to know how serious their situation is. I don't want them to just continue on like blinded to how damaging they're acting. And so I plan out exactly what I want to say to the person because I don't want my emotions to just like run this conversation. So that could get pretty bad. But, but yeah, we're going to express our anger, but we're not going to let it control us. We're in control. Also, it should be with sadness. If you're, like, really excited to go tell someone off, it's probably not acceptable anger, right? If you care about your friend that you have to talk to or something, you're going to be sad that you have to do this and that they're in this state. Also, this kind of anger should be resolved as soon as possible, right? So the passage said, don't let the sun go down when you're angry. The idea is you should work it out as fast as you can. So we're not going to let months or years go by with just this conflict brewing. In the new self, we realize that there are more important things at stake here than maybe how I feel or even this conflict. We realize that God is trying to save people who are lost in this world. And he has an enemy. Satan is trying to blind people to their need for God. And their eternal states are on the line here. And so we can't really afford to waste time fighting with this person or these people. Because we're on a mission. And so we need to remember that, you know, if we're mad with another brother or sister in Christ, they're really not the enemy. The enemy is Satan and any force that's trying to pull people away from God. Really, you and this person are allies on this mission that God has given us. So I, I want to talk about this a little bit. Why would Satan want people in embassy here to be angry with each other? AJ. To like divide? To divide us, yeah. Why would he want to divide us? We're not like strong by ourselves, we're like stronger together. Yeah, totally. It's like actually a good like war tactic or something. If you can divide people, it's easier to attack smaller groups than like a huge group of people. Right on. Yeah. If we're all like angry at each other, it's gonna be real awkward here and like really weird and so nobody like else is gonna wanna come. Like why would you wanna come somewhere everybody hates each other? <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, like oh yeah, I totally wanna go to a meeting where there's all this drama and like fights like, going on. else? Why might Satan want us to get angry? Yeah. Maybe we'll show bad examples. Yeah. Yeah. He loves doing that. 
using people who are Christians and then, you know, getting them to do stuff that's like, man, I don't ever want to be a Christian if it means being like that person. Totally. Wow. If your thoughts are focused on being angry at this person, that means they're not focused on winning people for God. That's a great point. Just as a distraction. Something to keep our minds off of what's really important. Yeah. Yeah. So Satan is totally into this, you know. If you find yourself being angry and blowing up at people, Satan's like, yeah, mm -hmm. keep doing that. So don't give him an opportunity, like our pastor said. In the New South, also, we're able to admit our part in this conflict, or in even my anger, right? And also, we're going to apologize. Uh -huh. So, we might be asking God, how have I made this worse? Like, what have I done to make this fight bigger than it needed to be? Or, what could I have done better, maybe, to just help things get more peaceful sooner? You're going to admit your fault before the other person. This is actually a sign of spiritual maturity. If you are the first one to show up and be like, you know what? What I did was not cool, and I'm really sorry. That shows that you have maturity. And when you, when you go to someone and apologize, your apology should be specific and without excuses. So let's think through some apologies, and you guys will tell me whether they're good or bad, OK? What about this one? Well, I guess I'm just a horrible person. Yeah. Why? Why is it bad? There's an excuse. Manipulative. Manipulative? Why are you a horrible yeah. person? Why are you a horrible person? Tell me what you've done. <laughs> yeah, it's totally not specific. It's like, well, my whole life is worthless or something. Like, but you're not even apologizing. Bad. bad. What about this? I'm sorry if you felt hurt by what I did. Bad. Bad. That was pretty good. Good. That was pretty good. Good. Bad. Yeah. It's bad. You're not Come saying you're you're what, that you're sorry for what you did. You're just saying I'm sorry that you, the way you feel. You yeah, that's the problem with this one. I used to love apologizing. This way. I thought it was so clever because I'm not actually admitting anything here. I'm just saying if you were hurt, which by the way would be really stupid because I didn't do anything wrong. I'm sorry that you you took it the wrong way. It's more like an insult than an apology if you think about it. Bad. What about this? I'm sorry I said you were lying. I was just real tired at the time. Bad. 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 Excuse. Why? Excuse. excuse. You're giving an excuse. Yeah. Bad. But this. I was wrong when I said this, this, and this, and that was totally unacceptable. I'm sorry. Good. Good. That's good. That's good. Tell us why. You're listening. I know. I just. It would be long if I told you all the things. It's, it's said. open. <laughs> but. No, you're saying specifically these are the things I said that were wrong. There's no excuse for that, and I'm sorry. That's a good apology. What about, yeah, I ditched you, but you didn't invite me to your party. That's boo. That's bad. And whenever you're saying, I'm sorry, but, that word, but, just erased everything you just said. You might as well not have said anything. <laughs> it's a bad vibe. So, the person that's living out of the new self is going to apologize and be willing to accept the consequences. Sometimes you'll get someone who is like, I'm really sorry, it sounds real good, and then you start, okay, cool, I forgive you, and now you start talking about the consequences that are come from whatever they did, and they're like, what? That shows you haven't actually faced you know, your fault in the situation. Because consequences are just something that naturally flow from our actions. And so someone who's like, realized what they've done and is able to admit that and apologize is going to be ready to be like, yeah, that's fair and I'm ready to accept that. In the new self, we're also just able to let it go. You know, a lot, most of the things, I would dare say, that we get mad about, we probably just shouldn't worry about. Just let it go. In the old self, that would never happen. 
So that's anger, and the passage goes on to talk about speech. It says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be, be an encouragement to those who hear them. So, in the Old South, I say what I feel like saying, even if it's rotten or causing decay, which is actually what the original word means that's foul or abusive. It's like rotted meat. <coughs> It's decaying. Do you guys want to eat that? Yes. <laughs> well, you shouldn't. <laughs> That's like what, if you're using this language that just tears people down, it's like making them sandwich with you. Nasty. And bacon strips. And bacon strips. And bacon strips. <laughs> Our speech is powerful, you know? Uh, how many times have you been sitting around maybe having a good conversation and then one person just comes in and it's like, they bring out this nasty comment and it's like, dude, you just brought everyone down. Like, you insulted this person and you made this person feel really awkward and now we're like all just like depressed <laughs> because of your comment, right? It's like nasty meat. <laughs> Instead of having a conversation that was like good, now it's like meaningless or worse, it's mean. In the new self, we understand and we respect the power of our words. We realize our speech has tremendous power for good or for harm. And you know, words can be more harmful than like weapons, right? You might you probably have the experience where someone says something to you and it's just like oh, just feels like they stab you. It's awful. But also words can be so healing, like a first aid kit that can just build someone up and encourage them. And so there's two ways we can decide on how to use our speech. Are we going to tear people down or are we going to build them up? You know, the fact is words stay with people. I bet each one of us can think back probably several years even and remember a time when someone used their words for great harm or great good in our lives. You know, maybe it was an insult that just ugh, stuck so deep inside of you. And that might be like one of the most painful times of your life, is that thing that that person said to you. But at the same time, I know that I can think of times where people, especially in the body of Christ, have said something to me that's just like, ugh, it revitalizes me. And I remember the moment exactly, and it's awesome. 